Well, I finally got it done. After spending about the better part of two hours getting the light set up, getting the camera ready, getting the mic together, I finally have what I consider a fairly professional studio for a, a small home studio. I'm Dr. Dave Martin, and I've been doing a series of podcasts called Positive Leadership. And in this particular podcast, I'm going to introduce you to what I consider five really good books on leadership. And when I'm finished with the podcast, I'll come back and close it out. Bye for now. I hope you enjoy this. Well, welcome again to another episode of Positive Leadership. In an earlier podcast, I posed this intriguing question, can leadership be taught? And in that podcast, I talked a little bit about some of the great leaders that I've studied. Now, along with these great leaders, I've read a lot of great leadership books. So what I'd like to do in this particular podcast is very quickly talk about some of my favorite leadership reads. Number one on the list. It's a book by Dr. Jim Collins called Good to Great. It was first published by Harper Business Publishing in 2001. For someone who's gone through the rigors of a PhD program myself, I do want to give you my bias up front and tell you why I think it's such a great book. And as someone who has spent so much time in the trenches in leadership positions, I'm a little tired of books about leadership that are just opinion-based. I want to know what really works and what doesn't work. And that's the strength of Dr. Collins' book. Dr. Collins did a detailed research into the list of Fortune 500 companies, all of them, for things that made companies truly great, not just good. He and his research team of over 20 people were looking for some companies that were consistently great. Dr. Collins had a very well-defined definition of what it meant to be great. To be considered great, the company had to be consistently beating the market averages for over 15 years. Why did they choose 15 years? Because they believed that that was long enough time for the leadership of the company to transcend one-shot wonders or one-hit wonders and show consistent leadership over time. They came up with 11 companies that were consistent winners over all of their competitors for more than 15 years running. From their research, they came up with some very profound conclusions. They came up with a concept called Level 5 Leadership. Now, there's two phases in this Level 5 Leadership. There's a build-up phase and a breakthrough phase. When this book came out in 2001, his concepts about five-level leadership were revolutionary. And here's some of the things they found. The most important thing was to get the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, and the right people in the right seats, and then figure out how to drive the organization. Now, this sounds brutal, but again, this was all well-researched and backed up by lots and lots of data. It's first who, and then the what. The right people in the right seats before vision. The next concept of this five-level leadership was to confront the brutal facts, to take a look at where the corporation was at and what discipline they might need to have to turn the company around. And other concepts in Dr. Collins' book was looking at core business concepts, making sure you had a culture of discipline. And here's what Dr. Collins says about that to quote from the book. When you have disciplined people, you don't need hierarchies. When you have disciplined thought, you don't need bureaucracy. When you have disciplined action, you don't need excessive controls. Other things that they found about these great companies were these companies, great companies were technology accelerators. And these companies looked at what it took to build a corporation to last. Now, I want to quote from the book again. And this is what Dr. Collins says at the very beginning of the book, and it's why I think it's such a leadership classic. Dr. Collins talks about greatness, and he says this. As you immerse yourself in this book, keep one point in mind. This book is not about the old economy. It's not about the new economy. It's not even about companies you're reading about or businesses per se. It's ultimately about one thing, the timeless principles 
of moving a company from being just a good company to a great company. It's how you take a good organization and then turn it into one that produces great results using the definition of results that best applies to your organization. This book has become a classic in both business and leadership circles. Now, another book that inspired me was a book by Donald T. Phillips called Lincoln on Leadership. Lincoln goes down in history as a great man, but Lincoln had some timeless leadership principles such as these. Get out of the office and circulate among the troops. Build strong alliances. Persuade rather than enforce. Honesty and integrity are the best policies. Never act out of anger or spite. Have courage to handle just criticism. Exercise a strong hand that's decisive. Set goals and be result-oriented. Master the art of public speaking and influencing people. And preach a vision and continually reaffirm it. Lincoln was a very good leader. And this particular book, Lincoln on Leadership, again, I think it's a classic. Now, another book, the third book I want to talk about that I've had on my bookshelf for about 30 years is another timeless classic. It's a book by Mary Walton called The Deming Management Method. As a father of total quality management, a lot of people liked Deming because of his statistical and analysis processes. But I think what they miss about this book is really important. What a lot of people miss is that for as much as Deming was passionate about statistical quality in his methods, he talked a lot about human elements. For example, he talked about the need for constantly training and retraining people. He talked about leadership that drives out fear. He talks about removing barriers between staff areas. And even in today's environment, it's important. And even in today's environment, it's a classic. And I've had it on my bookshelf for a while. Another Jim Collins classic is How the Mighty Falls. And it's the fourth book that I want to talk about. And it's kind of a reverse study on his earlier book, Good to Great. It's a great read if you're interested in how things can go wrong in corporate life, including when it's too late to save a corporation. Again, it's a good read. One of the things that we should all be concerned about in leadership is how we cultivate and transfer business wisdom. In the military, they talk about the need for continuity. And that's what this last book I'm going to discuss about talks about. It's called Deep Smarts by Dorothy Leonard and Walter Swap. It talks about the importance of developing a culture of business wisdom, a culture of what they call deep smarts. Some of the subjects that they've talked about the, are the importance of building this corporation and transferring deep smarts through experience, training, and cultivating a company that, that values this idea of continuous learning. The idea of this book that's so important is this whole idea of building a culture around the transfer of business wisdom. Well, those are just five of my favorite books. Lincoln on Leadership, The Deming Management Method, How the Mighty Fall, Deep Smarts, and my all-time favorite on leadership by Dr. Jim Collins, Good to Great. I've got some more, and I may do another podcast on some of my favorites, but I just thought that this would be a good starter for you to see what kind of books inspired me. And I hope they inspire you as well. And I hope that some of you will pick up these great books on leadership. Well, that's all I got for you today. I'm Dr. Dave Martin, and I'll be talking to you very soon. Well, those are my five recommendations. I probably missed a couple that, for example, and I know I missed a couple because I forgot to mention Simon Sinek, which I'm a big fan of his books. And I'm a big fan of Daniel Pink, and maybe I'll do another podcast. But I wanted to put my five recommendations out there to give you an idea of some of the great classics that I think every seasoned and veteran leader ought to read. Well, I'm Dr. Dave Martin. I'm glad you joined me for this journey. And if you like what I'm doing, please recommend, subscribe to the channel, and recommend what I'm doing to, to your friends. I'd appreciate it. The podcasts are an anchor. You can find my podcast under Positive Leadership by Dr. Dave Martin. It's on Anchor FM. You can find it on Google. And I am now in 
Sorry about for the lookup, good I had to do that. But I'm in 18 states and 14 countries, so I'm growing a pretty good audience. I'm not here to sell you anything, except I'd like to start a conversation on what it's like to be a leader down in the trenches and what you can do to engage in positive leadership. I'm Dr. Dave Martin, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.